Well, I promised this video like a month ago. Oh, scratch that, it's been like six months. Better late than ever, I guess. I don't know, just, just start the video. This was a little subject that I was going to mention in my House of Train Dragon series video. To be honest, it wasn't really relevant and it was going to take way too long. For something that I could really just turn into another video. That's if I ever get the time to make these. I find this quite interesting because you could just say, due to the different creators, the films and the series aren't fully cohesive with each other. Especially with the last one. stands to reason why it won't leave this place. It can't be away from the herbs it eats. I believe there's actually a possible explanation for this. For a carry on, please subscribe. <laughs> it would absolutely mean the world to me. Thank you. Anyway, the main question is, where was Heather, Dagger, Alvin, the Defenders of the Wing, and the Wing Maiden Island allies during the events of Hazard Trade Dragon 2 and 3? Why don't they help pick up in a time of crisis and desperate need of support? I could go into detail of every individual stating the possible reasons, such as business with their own island management, for example with Dago and the Defenders of the Wing having to sort out their own collusions of their respective nations, due to a lovely marriage, but this couldn't explain others like Alvin or the Maidens, or even Heather whom was there supporting her brother but couldn't lend a hand, or even so for the space of a couple of days. For Dagger and the Defenders of the Wing putting everything on hold to help out against a major threat like Drago Bloodfist? A threat, might I add, that directly conflicts with them as he's building a dragon army. Now, I believe the answer lies within the specific films themselves, with Hiccup's philosophy or ideology of how he deals with major threats. Hiccup believes he can change anyone's minds about dragons. Dad, if Drago's coming for our dragons, we can't wait around for him to get here. Let's go find him and change his mind. Oh, some minds won't be changed, Hiccup. Once you've earned his loyalty, there is nothing a dragon won't do for you. You won't be changing any minds around here. I can change yours. Right here. Right now. Uh, may I? This has been proven to work with stubborn people like Astrid, and especially Stoic the Vast. Further, something to further support my claim of mine is in the series, with three Alvin, Dagger, Vigo changing their minds out of like six, Riker, guy who's working for Drago, and Johan, who had to be dealt by force. So a pretty good track record, solid 50%. So looking closer at House Train Dragon 2, Hiccup flies out solo to meet with Drago to convince him to change his mind about dragons. I'm going to change his mind about dragons. Ignoring Stoke's warnings and getting separated by his fellow dragon riders, which were on board with Hiccup's plan. He was relatively careless about this, as he didn't even try to reunite with the other dragon riders or convincing his father that this cause of action is the correct method. Therefore, I heavily doubt that Hiccup would even ask her outside influence to help. In all honesty, he never really gets a chance to ask, as after his disagreement, he flies off again and then sort of gets kidnapped by his own mother. They hang out, catch up, Stoke shows up and, oh boy, a happy family again. But then they get attacked by Drago. Hiccup inevitably fails his plan and his father falls. Dragonless and a looming attack on Burke is pending. Hiccup can only rush and fix it, this issue himself. Bearing in mind their main source of communication is Terramel, which they didn't have access to. Luckily for the film, Hiccup manages to get back to Burke in time and wins the day with Toothless, becoming Chief. You can see he never really gets a chance to call for reinforcement, let alone the possibility that Drago has probably attacked and even captured the dragons from these islands for the dragon army, so the allies might not even be able to supply additional aid. Now, moving on to House Trade Dragon 3. Why were the Allies nowhere to be seen against the threat of dragons once again? You could argue that Hiccup had a chance to call for support, but again it comes down to Hiccup's mentality. And to be honest, he's learned from his mistakes. Berk is what you need to worry about. A chief protects his own. Now you and I can go talk to Drago together. What? Oh, there's no talking to Drago. Oh, but we have no. We must protect our own. He cannot reason with these people, and especially as he's aware that they are getting smarter. Even though I think Vigo was the smartest villain, but... 
The main issue here is that Burke is overcrowded. Enemies can easily blend in with the crowd and cause major damage which we see, literally setting a blaze to the whole thing. So calling for more people isn't really the smartest plan. And besides, Hiccup has a smarter idea. I'm saying we have to disappear. Off the map. Move the entirety of Burke without anyone knowing, allies or enemies. Doesn't even take into account that if Drago did take all the allies' dragons in the previous film, they could all be living on Burke. Not the actual allies, but the dragons. So once again, they are pretty useless. But I stress again, the issue wasn't the lack of firepower. To be honest, like if an Amado attacked Burke, it would be easily destroyed. I think a dragon army on its own could even take over the entire world if they so please. The main issue was simply due to the overpopulation. And there we go, this video is done. To be honest, there was more to say than I was actually initially expecting. So I'm glad I didn't make it into a full video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time. TTFN, ta for now.